I'm Johnny Vegas, and you're listening to Cop Talk with Dunk. And all you other Liverpool sites, just stop embarrassing yourself, all right? Yo, what up? This your boy Smooth, straight from New York. You're listening to Cop Talk Podcast. Remember this, you never walk alone, but if you fuck with us, you walk with a limp. All right, guys, how's it going? It is a Tuesday, the 6th of June, 2023, and you're listening to the Cop Talk Podcast in association with footballclubshares.com, where you can buy real shares in real football clubs. That's right, and I get a kickback too. Obviously, or else I wouldn't be telling you. No, footballclubshares.com is a website of mine, actually. <clears throat> it's very basic. And uh, people can buy shares in, in, in football clubs, yeah? Uh, and I do get a commission for it. But the reason I created that website was because I buy shares in football clubs, especially football clubs in Syria. And it just gives me a little bit of an interest. That's all. 25 quid. Instead of giving it to the bookmaker, I buy you know, a couple of shares or something like that. Well, lots of shares. Depends how much they are. Uh, but I don't do it to make money. I do it for an interest. But I'm sure you can make money and lose money when it comes to share dealing. But that's uh, up to you. Um, but yeah, and, and the website I don't think is displaying properly at the moment. I think the, um, I think the theme needs uh, fixing. But as you know, I'm a very busy guy. Uh, and that's not uh, the most important thing right now. So, what shall we talk about today? Right, okay, so the first video I did today on coptalk.tv uh, was a... I'm just looking at the title. I'm just loading the page, as I forgot already. Um, I know what it's about, but I couldn't remember what I called it. Come on, it's taking its time. Here we go, Liverpool pushing. That's a quote, pushing for Kone and or Thuram. Now... This relates to uh, a message that I was uh, given. Let me see. Uh, a message that I woke up to, should I say, this morning. And now I don't know where it is. You see, I don't... Listen, guys, when I sit down at <laughs> this podcast, I genuinely... Um, I need to pick my phone up. I, I genuinely don't prepare, as you can tell. So let's have a look and see what uh, which account it's on. Uh, must be this one. Uh, no, please tell me I haven't deleted it because that would be ridiculous. Guys, I can't find it. I'll tell you what I'll do. It's on the members' website. Uh, I'll load that up instead. So this morning when I woke up, you know, in the morning, the first thing I do is is I, is I pick my phone up, see if anyone's messaged or anything. And obviously that goes in, you know, when you when you look at messages, you look you start with those that you know. You think, oh, God, you know, such and such has messaged me. What's that? So you know what to jump to straight away. Um, and this is from a, you know, uh, I was gonna, I nearly said contact, and I don't like using that term. Uh, it's a friend of mine, you know, that, um, that, I've, that I've known for many, many years through the Cop Talk members website. Uh, they do participate on there. Um, and they sent me this message, and it said, and this is about uh, Thuram and Kone, and it said, I know you were dubious with the sources and the claims surrounding Kone and Thuram, but I had it confirmed this evening that we're pushing uh, that says we're pushing. Um, should hear something now that McAllister is imminent, like you. I can't see both coming in, but... And then it, the name's removed. I've had to remove the name, obviously. But someone, right, there is a name there, says club intentions are beyond determined this summer. I expect the better financial deal wins all. Now, I wasn't dubious about these two players being linked. Quite the opposite, actually, at the time. Um, and I have spoke to this person since they sent me that message this morning, just to be clear about that. I wasn't dubious. I'd questioned the reporting surrounding the links at the time. Uh, I think it was the one of them, I think it was, you know, I felt like someone wanted it out there to know that we were pushing uh, for one of these players. And I was suspicious of that, that's all. And I think I said that uh, Kone sounds like, you know, we're focusing a lot of attention at the, at the moment, but Thuram was more mild attention. But I did say in my very first video when I touched on these two players, um, there is definite interest in them. So, uh, but there was I was a little bit dubious with some of the, the reporting around it, but definitely I did believe that they were, um, you know, on, on the radar, if you like. Uh, I said they were both on the agenda, but at different levels of interest at that specific time. 
Uh, I've always believed our interests to be genuine. And I think, you know, basically my friend misunderstood uh, and I've updated them. So I just want to be clear about that because I wasn't dubious about the uh, that they were on the agenda. I hope that makes sense. See, I discussed this probably around six hours ago and I'm still <laughs> I'm still struggling to, to explain myself. Um, so what's interesting, though, with this is that, you know, this person that is well connected, I trust them immensely, uh, claims from another person that works directly within the club, which is why I've removed the name, um, and I can verify that. Okay, well, what I mean by that is that's not just someone telling me something and me believing them. I know who they're referring to. Um, that person within the club says that the club intentions are beyond determined this summer, which sounds very exciting, but is it, you know, just like a bit of guff? Do you know what I mean? We believe it when we see it. That's how I uh, deal with things. Um, but it is interesting, and it does sound like, you know, once we get this McAllister situation ironed out, and I will never, you know, assume that that deal is done, done. You know, my definition of done is different to even Fabrizio Romano, because nothing's done to me until it is legally binding and nobody can get out of it. All right? That is my done. So if you ever hear me say it's done, you can chill the fuck out. You know what I mean? Um, so it does sound like Liverpool are focusing all their attention on this. And the the key part of that message to me was I expect the better financial deal wins all, meaning that maybe Liverpool might only go for one of them. It depends on the finances. Like some people say, well, why can't we get both? Well, it, well yeah, true. But what if they're trying to get someone else that would make you even more excited? You might only be able to pick one of them up then. So maybe a case of playing them off each other, the different agents, you know, like, well, you know, we'd like to sign one of you two. I'll be honest with you, but we can't do this. We can't do that, blah, blah, blah. So... Nevertheless, the point I'm trying to say here is with regards to Kone and Thuram or Turam or however you want to pronounce it, you know, or I'm like with names, you should monitor the fuck out of their names, okay, and reports concerning them. Not the Twitter ITKs, not the aggregators, not the regurgitated shite blogs and that, the people that matter, all right, and see what uh, comes out of those situations. Okay, so... Let's just, we're going to have a look and see if there's anything. Uh, I haven't looked at any of this prior to recording. I never do. Um, I prefer just to go off the fly and then it, it, it sort of like inspires me as I go along. So Jamie Carragher uh, has been commenting and apparently he's identified Liverpool's transfer priority. And he's quoted as saying, I look at the defence and I think Joel Matty now has got a year to go. If you got £10 million, whatever the price may be, it's probably right to move on. I do think we need a left-sided defender, a left-footed centre-back. Uh, a lot of teams have them, we don't. A left-sided player would add something. Now, you see, do we really want £10 million for Joel Matty? Or would you rather say, no, I'd rather keep the numbers high in the squad and just forget that £10 million? Do you know what I mean, guys? It doesn't always work like that with FSG. Like We do it in very simplest terms, don't we, which is what Carragher's doing here is we go like, oh, right, Joel Matty, he goes, we get 10 million. And we assume that that money is then made available to the manager. And that's not always the case. With it being such a low amount, you know, I'd be thinking, well, let's just hold on to it. You know, you can say to yourself, well, we've got enough players here in that. Right, well, we have injuries, right? We know we've got players that are going to be going. And, all right, we can look at certain cup competitions and think, well, we can play the kids. Well, maybe I'd rather play Matty in the FA Cup you know, or, or the league. I want those competitions, guys. I'm old school. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe you're younger than me. You know, maybe that makes me an old miserable fart, which probably am to some of you. But the values of Liverpool Football Club for what I was brought on, brought up on was to win everything. And I know everybody wants to chase, you know, the, the Champions League and all that. But, and rightly so, absolutely. But the... the I'm telling you now, if you've ever had the opportunity to go to an FA Cup final or a League Cup final, I will tell you it's one of the best days of your lives. How many Liverpool supporters truly can go and watch Liverpool in Champions League final, take the maybe the wife, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, the husband, the two kids or whatever, in, a, in another foreign country? How many people can do that? Do you know what I mean? I couldn't do that. And that's if you can get tickets. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm lucky I can get tickets. You know, I've had, you know the season, I had the season tickets since the 90s. They were sorted out for me by um, former chief executive Peter Robinson. I'm a former club shareholder, which gives me guaranteed entitlement. Although I'm, I don't even know how that works, so I don't use it. Um, and, and obviously, I've got the website and know zillions of people, so I can get tickets. You know, I'm lucky, but that doesn't mean that I can afford to, to bomb around and take time off. Uh, 
you know, and, and stuff, where if you get to an FA Cup final or a League Cup final, it's in your own country, and even that's difficult to get tickets, but it's the best, some of the best memories of my life as a Liverpool supporter have been like an FA Cup final, or especially the League Cup finals. And when you look back at 2001, what an incredible year that was, Cardiff, all those trips, it's not just the 90 minutes, it's the travel, it's the being in the city or the town, you know, the city where it's being played or whatever, and having a drink and a nice summer's day in England, you cannot beat it, uh, or Wales. Um, but do you know what I mean, guys? So don't, don't allow yourself to become snobby when it comes to those cup competitions. Go, oh, I'm not bothered about that. And nah, real football fans are bothered about that. Real Liverpool fans, I think. Honestly, I really do, guys. Uh, and so I don't want to just see the kids throwing in again. I want to win those fucking games. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and Jurgen Klopp, he ain't too bothered about that shit. And that's because he's German, right? It's because he's German. They, they, that's, how, that's their attitude, right? That's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being German, but trust me, that's what it is. Because when Jürgen came, he, he didn't understand it. He was like, well, the FA Cup League, what, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? They're not bothered about that. Me, I am. So, Matty, 10 million. What do you think? I fucking keep him, it's not worth it. Uh, Liverpool eye open move for Frank Kessie. Uh, that's according to reports that have started from a Spanish outlet called Sport. Uh, he only moved to uh, to Barcelona from AC Milan last summer. Uh, but apparently, uh, Jurgen Klopp and his recruitment tree, recruitment team are now sniffing around him. Not sure I believe that. The Premier League title odds uh, from Bet365 next year. We've got Man City at 4-6, to six, Arsenal at 7-1, to one, Liverpool third favourites. Uh, third joint favourites, actually, with Manchester United at 8-1, Chelsea 12 and Newcastle 14-1. to 14-1 to is a good... Uh, price for Newcastle, I would say. Um, but, you know, I think most people uh, want, well, not want, w- would expect uh, Manchester City to uh, to run away with it. Not me. I want to see what Liverpool do, you know, in the transfer window. Fuck it. We could, we've done it before. We can do it again. But, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get depressed and start talking about the owners, guys. You know what I'm saying? But... <sighs> We can listen. I don't want you guys to get excited if we sign three cracking players and then forget that that would have been the equivalent of Jude Bellingham. Because in my opinion, we should be signing Jude Bellingham and three cracking players. And I've got a feeling that Liverpool fans this summer might come out of it being like, "Oh, this was good. We got these," but and then forget when they work it all out. So be careful. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Fabio Cavallo, uh, subject. Uh, to a possible second bid from Leipzig. I think we, I don't know if we discussed that on yesterday's uh, uh, podcast. Alexis McAllister, again, guys, I'm not going to go through all this. This is just regurgitated shite. This is what I'm saying. When you do a podcast every day, you know, all you've got really is uh, Fabrizio Romano, you know, just repeating the same shit in a different order every day of the week. So we know the Alexis McAllister situation should be confirmed once the, once the window opens. Uh, and I think that's when Liverpool will kick on and we'll start seeing some uh, more, you know, um, exciting transfer news. Uh, Aston Villa are expected to make an approach for Yuri Tielemans. He's out of contract, of course, previously linked with a move to Liverpool. I am astounded that he's not being mentioned with us at all, which makes me think Liverpool are up to other things. Um, Liverpool, I think, don't know what they're going to do yet. I think Liverpool are kind of in that like, oh, we can go for him or him or him. And they're literally going, well, which which one's the better deal? I'm sure I mentioned this once before. When I bought my first house, it was a terraced house. And number five was the one I bought. But number one was up for sale at the same time. Both of them, right? They were both up at the same time. Other than being four door aparts, because it was one, two, three, four, five on that street. Um, they were almost identical in appearance and what they could do for me. And I then decided, you know, well, 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 how much is that? Well, we want this. And ours is a thousand cheaper. And so I went to the other one and said, well, that's a thousand cheaper. Well, we'll do 1500 cheaper. And that's how you do it. Now, it might sound a bit simple, but that's what happens in football. So I think Liverpool are just all these links you're seeing in midfield. I genuinely think a lot of these players are under consideration and it's not just idle speculation. Uh, okay, um, I am not going to read out uh, stuff to you just to try and spark interest. We're going to keep it real. Um, now, one thing we will mention is Sky Sports Germany's Florian Plettenberg. He says Liverpool are still in the race, the race, the infamous race 
for Mason Mount. And he said, being told MUFC is pushing him a lot, Ten Hag and the bosses share the same opinion about him. They definitely want him. Within the club, they're all convinced of him. Understand he will decide between Manuel Liverpool. Price valuation, 45 to 50 million euros with bonuses included. I don't believe that, guys. The Mason Mount one to me is... I don't know. You know, the big gun journalists, the ones in the click and stuff like that, and the ones that we maybe pay attention to, they've been adamant about Mason Mount. And I've got to be honest, I've been a bit lukewarm with it from the start. We know there was talks back in January. But I... I don't see Liverpool paying them sort of prices, guys, when I think there's better alternatives around, premiums or not. Do you know what I'm saying? So, never say never, but I'm not sure I believe that. I'd love to know what you think. Podcast at cocktalk.com. Uh, what else? John Barnes, he's been speaking to bonus code bets. I'm not going to go into, uh, into these sort of... Um, betting websites and why they use as legends to to promote them but anyway uh nothing wrong with john barnes i love him. he's my all-time liverpool uh favorite player he says i think alexis McAllister will come with a huge reputation and expectation to be a starter when you're signing a midfield player like him they're going to go straight into the team if we sign a forward then he may have to fight for his place unless he's the best forward in the world but in the midfield if it's a player you want he's going to go straight into the team a hundred percent be it Casado, Declan Rice, be it any of them. I don't think they're going to sign midfield players to be part of the squad. Whereby, if they sign a wide player, you could say that he'd be a squad player. If they're signing a midfield player, he's going straight into the team. Basically, he's saying that Alexis McAllister is going to walk into the team, which he is. The Casado link, guys. Where is that? I've been patiently waiting, you know, for for that to, to kind of gain some ground with us. I don't think I'm going to get it. Um, but that was one I was like, I just saw us doing a bit of more business with him, with them, sorry. Uh, yeah, and I know some of you really like him, but nothing yet. I'm being disappointed, I've got to be honest. Uh, Brighton are expected to uh, soon announce a, a deal for James Milner. There you go. And we've heard that every day for the last fucking month. Uh, Newcastle United will not be signing Gabri Vega uh, this summer. It's been claimed the Spanish midfielder has been strongly linked with the move to St. James's, St. James's Park, as well as Anfield, of course. Though it now seems Eddie Howe's side are out of the running. Now, this is... Uh, the, I have not made a video uh, about this about this kid. And uh, I just want to get this out there, that I think you should be watching that one. I do, guys. I, I do think you should be watching that one. There is a lot of... How do I explain? There's a lot of chatter from people behind the scenes in relation to him. Not the fucking Twitter IT kids or even the journals that you might pay attention to. But behind the scenes, there's people mentioning his name quite a lot. Now, the reason I haven't made a video about it is because no one's really committed to an absolute factual statement. So they're all talking about you know, don't keep an eye on him, we're doing this, we're doing that, but no one's nailed their colours to the mast, if you like, is that the right, nailed them, nailed their, is that what it is? They're saying nobody's come out and said, don't go with it, because we are making some noises. So maybe opinion, intuition around that, could be a case that he's there, he's, maybe when they sort out what they're doing now, he could be next on that list of possibles to work at. So I want you to keep an eye on that one, all right? Privately, between me and you on the podcast, all right? If it explodes, I want you to back me up when I make a video about it, say, don't did fucking mention it, did say we need to watch it. But no, seriously, it's, it's about the people that are saying it. And when it's people I know and trust, I like to wait until two or three people have like committed themselves to something before I waste your time. Okay, um, we, right, we've gone through all that shite. Let's have a look at today's gossip. The mainstream media and all clubs. So reports in Germany say Manchester City's Ilke Gundogan, 32, could return to British Dortmund this summer as Barcelona cannot afford to pay the out-of-contract Germany midfielders wages. Never thought we'd hear the day uh, that Barcelona couldn't do that. Sport. In Spain, Barca have tried to persuade Gundogan by extending their contract offer to three years with reduced wages, while Arsenal have offered a two-year deal and a lucrative proposal um, is also expected from a Saudi club. Sport. 
Uh, again, Spain. Real Madrid's first bid for Harry Kane will be €80 million, Euros, which is £69 million, pound, but Tottenham have initially valued the England striker at €120 million, Euros, £103 million. Pounds. If you're a Tottenham fan, how do you replace Harry Kane? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mirror, Tottenham will back incoming manager Ange Postacoglo, I don't know how to pronounce his name, with funds to rival Newcastle for Leicester's England midfielder James Madison and target Brentford Spain goalkeeper David Rea. And Wolves English defender Max Kilman. Uh, L'Equipe PSG have beaten Chelsea to the signing of Uruguayan midfielder Manuel Ugarte from Sporting Lisbon. I think Liverpool were very deep uh, with that one, guys. And I think it was a little bit complex and a, bit, a little bit complicated for Liverpool. And Liverpool don't like to get into uh, confusing situations. I, I, it's true with ownership and representation and things like that. I don't think any club does, but some clubs are a bit more gung-ho. Liverpool are a bit like me on a dating app when you meet a girl and she tells you she's got kids and she's her ex is in her life and you think, nah, you're all right, I'll fucking leave it. That's a little bit what I think Liverpool have thought with Manuel Ugarte. I don't think that player has rejected us, put it that way. The standard Chelsea have switched their focus to signing Brighton's Ecuador midfielder Moses Casado, 21, after missing out on Ugarte. Express... Chelsea have also revived their interest in Southampton's Belgian midfielder Romeo Lavia, uh, who is 19, and former Blues forward Eden Hazard has had a role in a prospective move. Now, Lavia was subject to a Liverpool inquiry probably about 10 days, two weeks ago. I don't know how fast time's moving at the moment, but uh, we know that's been... Uh, we know that there was an approach, an inquiry, direct to the club. Since then, I've got to be honest, guys, not heard a fucking thing. So, no idea what's going on with that regard. Maybe Liverpool are focusing on other things. It sounds like it, but maybe they were just put off by something. But I would advise strongly to watch that uh, his his future or reports surrounding his future. The Guardian, Alexis McAllister, will sign for Liverpool from Brighton, subject to a medical, with the Argentina midfielder understood to have agreed a five-year contract. The Mail, Atletico Madrid, have inquired about a possible move for Zaha. Uh, the Ivory Coast forward will become a free agent if he decides not to accept a new contract at Palace. Sport, Liverpool would be willing to pay Barcelona £30 million to sign Ivory Coast midfielder Frank Kessie. Football transfers, disgusting. I wouldn't listen to these people. Tottenham have contacted Everton over a potential summer move for England goalkeeper Jordan Pickford, but could be put off by the asking price for a 29-year-old who is under contract until 2027. Mundo Deportivo. Barcelona and Poland striker Robert Lewandowski has no plans to leave the club this summer, despite being linked with a move to the Saudi Pro League, and he's 34 now. The Athletics say Aston Villa have joined the race to sign uh, Yuri Tielemans, as we've already touched upon. The Mail say Portugal goalkeeper Diego Costa, 23, has cool talk linking him with a summer move from Porto to Manchester United. Fabrizio Romano says Engolo, Engolo Kante remains open to staying at Chelsea, but the France midfielder 32 is yet to agree on a new deal. And Saudi clubs Al Itihad and Al Nazi are interested in signing him this summer. Telegraph. Newcastle United have been informed that England midfielder Calvin Phillips, 27, intends to stay at Manchester City. Football insider, bleh, Newcastle have stepped up their efforts to sign Turkey midfielder Arda Gula, 18, from Fenerbahce. We're going over to Spain now, and Real Madrid have asked Bayern Munich about the possibility of signing Canada left-back Alfonso Davies, 22. Football insider Inter Milan have made a move to sign English defender Trevor Chalobah, 23, from Chelsea this summer. And they also say that Brighton are set to announce the arrival of Germany midfielder Mahmoud Dahoud, 27, from British Dortmund, at a free transfer. And finally, football transfers. West Ham are looking at three midfielders. Southampton in England's James Ward-Prowse, Chelsea in England's Conor Gallagher, and Manchester United in Scotland's Scott McTominay. Now... I'm always I'm suspicious about this football transfers website, guys. I've got to tell you that, and uh, I don't understand how it's getting some traction. In um, I, I I don't know. I've made some opinions known privately about this to some people about the people behind uh, football transfers because the BBC, where I get more, you know, they collate the, the transfer rumors and that, and they tend to, you know, um, they don't really pick up on on some I, I i don't really understand why they pick the 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 mm, let me rephrase this i don't understand why they include some of the speculative websites I, I just don't get it so it just makes me think that it's 
you know that there's that some people maybe know some people All right uh, my mouse went flat please don't go flat on me uh, okay so that's your gossip today uh we are i'm just gonna look on the cocktail members website don't forget that's the place to be you know i know what you think yeah 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 you're gonna tell it listen all right look the first thing i see here ranter returns club sale opinion how could you not want to read that? Ranter is like one of our biggest contributors for fucking decades. So I guarantee the people will be going giddy on there. Um, we've got updates on uh, through Ram. That's the, uh, well, 15 minutes ago. So this is the place to be. I love the chat room. It's my like little abode. You know, I like I hide away in here when I want a quiet life, you know, and this is the place to be. And if you ever want to be a member on there, right, and you think, I, I ain't got that much money at minute, don't Drop me an email, dunkercoptalk.com. Buy me some fucking beer or something like that. Don't tell anyone and I'll sort you out. Just be honest with me. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's it's not about like, like squeezing people. It's about being honest, getting good people on board. Do you know what I'm saying? And if I look after you, right, you'll look after me if things pick up, right? Vice versa, whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you want to get on the members' website, just drop me an email, dunkercoptalk.com. Be honest with me. You know, and uh, and we'll sort you out because I just like I want to have people on there that want to be on there. Do you know what I mean for the right reasons? So we just keep it between me and you, all right? Um, what we're gonna do now? We're gonna give a shout out to the squad. We're gonna give a shout out to the people that support this podcast and make it possible. And every single name you're about to hear, you should be grateful to because without them, I wouldn't be able to justify doing the podcast. I love doing the podcast, uh, but it takes up time. And uh, I promise you, that no money is made from the podcast. So uh, let's give a shout out. So www.coptalkpodcast.com if you want to join your squad. All right. Thanks to the, uh, those of you on the old fan tier. It's a legacy tier. It's not longer no longer available, but I do appreciate you guys that uh, are still renewing on that. I did it as a favor to help you guys out, and I'm glad you took advantage of it. So let's give a shout out to the supporters. Now, you can become you know a supporter of the podcast. It's the equivalent of buying me a drink once a month or a cheap Spanish coffee. Not a Starbucks coffee, a cheap Spanish coffee. You know what I'm saying, guys? Uh, and it's www.coptalkpodcast.com. You get all the adverts removed. You get the bonus episodes when I do them. Uh, and you're supporting me, all right? And, um, yeah, thanks. So let's give a shout-out to those people that do support me. Thanks to uh, the likes of Liam Buckland and James Braid. We've also got Wayne Brown and Tom Brown, TG, Simon Digweed, Mark Bingley, Jimmy Negret. We've got Jamie and motherfucking Gilmore. We've got Arian. We also have Hamza. We have Glyn Taylor. We have uh, Clint. Uh, and we have Aaron as well. Uh, we then have what we call our legends. That's like one and a half coffees. Uh, we've got Craig Alford, uh, top man, Tyler Dean Williams, Paul MC, Matt Meeker, James Lee, Jack Wood, Jack Rudge, and Big Wave Dave, and Andrew, Ev Andrew Evans. And then we've got the royalty. That's right. They get me a couple of coffees and I don't know, maybe a sausage roll if I was allowed to have them. Uh, they're, they're our royalty. They're Michael Couchman, David Sutcliffe and Adam Naylor. Adam Naylor's got a great YouTube channel. The only YouTube YouTuber I watch to do a Liverpool football club. He messaged the other day. He's hit his 1,000 uh, subscribers, which I want to feel like I contributed to that because I've been pushing the fuck out of Adam because I really like it and I wanted to get him to 1,000 and obviously I want him to get to many, many more uh, because I really like Adam, he's a great kid. So when he told me the other day he did a thousand, I was fucking delighted to be honest with you. So thank you, Adam. And you see, he supports me. Do you know what I mean? He supports me, so I'll support him. That's how we do this shit, right? Um, and you don't have to be a content creator to get my support. I'll help, I'll help you in any way I can. So www.coptalkpodcast.com if you want to join the squad, all right? Or... You know what I mean? If you're a supporter, you can always move up to a legend or royalty. I'm just saying, you well, I guess you can move in the other direction. I don't want to give you ideas. Though. Right, is there anything else I want to talk to you about before we go? I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm trying to do a podcast every day this week. Well, Monday to Friday um, in the morning, all right? Uh, but, you know, it is news permitting, and I feel like we've repeated a few things from yesterday. Um, but at the same time, I think we did have enough content within this podcast to... Uh, to give us something to to uh, to discuss, you know, to think about. So, listen, if you've got Twitter and Facebook, we do have accounts for this podcast, and it won't surprise you that the username on Facebook and Twitter is Cop Talk Podcast. So when I put a new episode out, they go out on there first. There, that's where you'll be notified. All right, please do that. My own personal Twitter is at Duncan Oldham. Blah blah blah. One more thing. 
I'm YouTubing a bit on my own personal channel, youtube.com forward slash Duncan Oldham. I'm streaming on there nearly every day at the moment, usually when I finish work or have a break, doing a bit of Call of Duty DMZ. Some of you guys have been joining me, and that's really why I'm doing it, to be honest with you. I enjoy that. Um, I'm not streaming on the Cop Talk TV, those things, as I think keep the, keep it away. It's not to do with football. But when I do it on my personal channel, Duncan Oldham on YouTube, you guys are coming over and still joining. We're still talking Liverpool. Um, but, you know, yesterday, um, Jay Garrow was on there. He's a big Liverpool fan. He joins us on the streams and things. Uh, he came in the game. You know, we get Dale, we get Miserable Martin, Matthew Beal. You know, we've had we've had quite a few Reds on there. Uh, so, if you know, if you've got a, a PlayStation, an Xbox, a console, it's cross-platform. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, what, Modern Warfare 2 DMZ is what we play. It's free. Uh, and you can, all you need is my Activision ID and you can jump on there and we can chill out. Do you know what I'm saying, guys? So uh, youtube.com forward slash Duncan Oldham. I'd really appreciate if you'd give me uh, a sub on there. I'd like to build that channel up a little bit because it just takes me a little bit away from the football, you know, which dictates my life. And it's just nice to escape and do something different, but still be surrounded by the people that I really enjoy. OK, guys, that's the lot for today. Uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow morning, all being well. All right.